All right. Any questions at all before we start new stuff today? Last new stuff before the test next Friday? Go ahead. <laughs> and we're going to, uh, this one we're going to talk about today and on Monday. So we'll do more of the same on Monday. Wednesday we'll have a review for the test. And then the test will be Friday. <clears throat> All right. So today we're going to talk about solving equations that involve radicals. So sometimes, uh, well, one of our big techniques, of course, for getting, I'm sorry, for solving equations with radicals, especially with square roots in them, we'll be squaring both sides of the equation because we know that squaring undoes the square root. You know, make the radical go away, and then we can start solving the equation like we've done other ones. The one thing we have to worry about when we're doing uh, radical equations of square both sides, it's possible to introduce solutions that aren't really solutions. In particular, when I square a negative number, it becomes positive, right? So it's possible that something satisfied the equation when I have a positive, but it wouldn't in the original equation when it was negative. So anytime that we do uh, a radical equation and we square both sides, we're going to have to check our answers at the end to make sure they actually work. Okay? If it's a solution that we find that doesn't work, we refer to those as extraneous. Yeah. So, not unlike what we did with the, uh, remember that we had the equations with the rational expressions and we multiplied both sides by a variable, we always had to check and make sure we could plug it in. It's the same kind of idea here. Okay. Basically, Check your answers when you're done. Make sure that makes sense. Okay. All right. So let's talk about our general technique for solving a radical equation. So notice it says the first step will to be will be to isolate one of the radicals. So it's entirely possible that your equations might have two radicals in them. If it does, get one radical all by itself before you switch. Okay, that's what that says. That's what it means by isolate the radical. If you've got two or three, probably get three, but if you get two or three or so on, get one by itself on one side and then square. We'll see some examples like that. In this case, notice that our radical is already isolated, right? It's already all by itself on one side. Okay. So in this particular one, we can just rewrite the equation down. Oops. And have square root of 2x squared plus 4 equals 6. All right, so the next step is that I want this radical to go away. Since I've got a square root here, I'm going to square both sides of the equation. If it were a cube root, I'd cube both sides of the equation to make it go away. If it were a fourth root, I'd take the fourth power on both sides. So whatever the Whatever the index is on the radical, you'll do that power to both sides. Okay. So in this case, we would take square root of 2x squared plus 4 oops, squared equals 6 squared. And again, the reason why we square is because that makes the radical go away on the left-hand side. Now it's possible, and we don't see that here, but it's possible that this step, if there were a radical on this side, maybe you had like 2 minus square root of x plus 1 or something like that. If you have a radical on this side, it's possible when you square it, there's still a radical left over. So then you would repeat these steps, isolate the radical, square again. We're going to see examples of like that later. Okay. Right now, there aren't any radicals left. All right, so let's see if we can solve this equation now. If we solve, we can subtract the 4 to the other side. So we get 2x squared equals 32. Divide both sides by 2 in this case. We'll have x squared equals 4. 
I want to get x by itself to get rid of the square. What will we do to both sides? Or is it another way? We could also, we could say, so let's go ahead. Oh, yeah, 16. Sorry. I was thinking about what the answer is going to be at the end. Sorry. All right. Sorry about that. You're right. It is 16. Thank you. Um, maybe even a better way is uh, we could do the square root of both sides, but maybe just to remind, remember if we want to use, if we want to solve an equation by factoring, we would get everything equal to zero. How does x squared minus 16 factor? Yeah, x plus 4 and x minus 4. That was what I was thinking when I wrote 4. <laughs> What's the 4 there? So what are your x values going to be here? Good. Yeah, so negative 4 and positive 4 for the answers. Notice that once we got rid of the radicals, we solved this equation just like we did every other equation, right? The only thing that's going to be a little bit different now is that when we're at this final answer, we want to plug this, in, plug our answers in and make sure they make sense. Make sure they're not extraneous, okay? Make sure they actually work. So if we plug in negative 4, Well, negative 4 squared is 16 times 2. I'll just write it that way. Then 2 times 16 is 32 plus 4 really does give me 36. So that one worked, didn't it? I get 6 when I plug that in. And we should get the same thing when we plug in 4. So that one checked as well. Okay. So both of the answers work. So both of them will be solutions. So x equals negative 4 and positive 4 are our solutions in this case. But again, the last step again is important. Anytime that you square both sides of an equation, you might make a false statement true. Okay. To give you an easy example of that, is that true? Yeah. That's true. <laughs> That's not true, right? But what would happen if I square both sides? Is that true? Yeah. yeah. So I can change I can change a false statement into a true one if I square both sides. That's why we have to check our answers. So let's see if we can do a couple of these examples together here. Let's just look at the first one. Remember again, your first step is to isolate the radical. Well, it's been isolated, right? It's all by itself on one side. So what's the next step then? Once we isolate the radical, what's the next step? Square both sides. The whole reason why we isolate the radical is so that when we square both sides, that radical that's been isolated goes away. Right? That's the whole point of doing that. The reason why we isolate the radical is so that when we square both sides, that radical in particular goes away. Okay? What do you get when you square the left-hand side? Yep, just the x plus 7. On the right-hand side, what do you get when you square? Mm -hmm. mm, Got to be careful. Ah, uh, yeah. What do we get when we, when we uh, square x plus 5? Right, I got a foil, don't I? I gotta do I gotta do x plus five times x plus five, right? I gotta do all my distributions, not just x squared plus twenty-five. It's x squared plus 
Yep, you're exactly right. It's exponential no static for 25. That's exactly right. Okay. And do all of our distributions. So we've got x plus 7 equals x squared plus 10x plus 25. Oops. How do we solve that equation now? What do I need to do? Yeah, I've got to bring the x over and the 7 over, right? i got to get everything over to one side. So you've got x squared plus 9x plus 18. Again, the reason why we set it equal to zero now is we'll factor it and set each piece equal to zero. How does that factor? What is it going to be? Yep, so we subtracted the x and subtracted the 7. Yep, that's right. So what do you get when you factor that now? Good. X plus 6 and X plus 3. Yep. Good. Okay, so we get negative 6 and negative 3. Is that the final answer? What do we have to do with our answers when we do the radical equations? We always need to check it, right? We always, always have to check, okay? If you use x equals negative 6, you've got negative 6 plus 7. Is that equal to negative 6 plus 5? No, because no, we get square root of 1. Is that equal to negative 1? Square root of 1 is... One. Okay. So negative six is not a solution. It doesn't work. Okay. How about negative three? Does it work? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have square root of negative three plus seven is that the same thing as negative three plus five? Negative three plus seven is four. We have square root of four. Is that the same thing as two? And Yes, it checks. So this one doesn't work. So your final answer would just be the negative 3. Again, always, 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 always check your answer in these radical equations every single time. <clears throat> and again, the reason for that is you can make a false statement into a true one. Notice that when you put in negative... 6 in for x, it creates a false statement, right? But what would have happened if I would have squared? Well, then it's a true statement. Okay? This is why we have to check. Squaring both sides can always, can, uh, can always, it can change a, a false statement into a true one. So we always have to check. There. Work on number 2 for a minute. And we'll chat about it. And we'll do three together. So work on number two for a minute, and we'll do three together here in a minute as well. Yeah. There. Yep. It's already isolated, right? Radicals already by itself. Since it's a cube root, in this case, we want to cube both sides. And again, the reason again the reason why we want to isolate the radical and then do whatever power we need to do is because that makes the radical go away, right? So what's the left hand side going to equal when you do this? But yeah, the five plus three x. The left hand side is a five plus three x. The right hand side is maybe negative sixty four. Good, exactly.
Then what do we do? Good. Subtract a 5. Good. So that 3x equals you know, the negative 69. And then we can get negative 23. So what do we got for the x? What do you do? With, okay. Now, is that the final answer or do we need to check? Better check it. Good. So cube root of 5 plus oops, 3 times negative 3, is that equal to negative 4? Oops, 3 times negative 23. Three times negative 23 gives you negative 69. Five minus 69 is negative 64. And what is the cube root of negative 64? That'd be a negative four, yeah. Oops. And so it does check. Remember, when you do the cube root of a negative, it stays negative, and then cube root of 64 is 4 in this case. So it does check. So your negative 23 is the correct answer there. This one okay? All right. Let's do this last one together, and then I'll let you set you loose on a worksheet, and then on Monday we'll have more practice problems to do. So notice it's number three, we've got two radicals, right? Now, even if that x plus 20 were on the left-hand side, we'd still want to do the same kind of process that we're doing. Make sure that you isolate the radical first. So we want to get one of the radicals all by itself on one side, okay? which we have. And then again, our next step is to do what? Square it, good. Square both sides. So notice again, just like, yes? So is the minus 3 under the radical? Yeah. No, the minus 3 is not under the radical. Okay. Yeah, it makes a difference, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the minus 3 is not under the radical. So notice when you square this, I'll do this off to the side, you're going to have to do something similar to what we did earlier with that example. Oops. Uh, when we had x plus 5 squared, we had to FOIL, didn't we? Yeah, so we're going to do the same thing here. When you multiply, I'm just, this is why I'm doing it off to the side. When you take square root of x plus 20 and multiply it by a square root of x plus 20, what do you get? Just the x plus 20, right? Then I got to take the x plus 20. Square root of x plus 20 and multiply it by negative 3. What do we get there? Be negative 3 times square root of that. Good. And then I got to do the same thing with the negative 3, right? I got to do negative 3 times the square root of x plus 20. So we get another one. And then I got to do the negative 3 times the negative 3 gives you what? Positive 9. Don't forget we have to FOIL, right? We have to do all of our distributions. So I'm going to do the square root of x plus 20 times both pieces, and I'm going to do the minus 3 times both pieces. Yeah. It's one group, yep. Yep. So let's go back to our equation now. What's the left hand of the side of the equation equal to? X plus 5. What's the right hand side of the equation equal to? Yep. Good. So I've got an X. I've got a 20 plus 9, that's where the 29 comes from, and we've got 
minus three times that radical and a minus three times the same radical, so that's why it's minus six times the square root of x plus one. Notice that we still have a radical left, don't we? But it's better than what we started with because how many radicals did we start with? Two, now we have one, yeah. So <clears throat> now I do, this is what the note said about repeat steps one and two, is that there are radicals, right? Move, the next step is isolate the radical. What that means is get the radical all by itself on one side. Well, to do that, I can subtract x from both sides, subtract 29 from both sides. Five minus 29 will give me negative 24. So we have negative 24 equals negative six times x plus 20. You could divide by the negative six. It's not necessary though. We've got the radical isolated. The whole point of getting it by itself is so that when you square it, it goes away, okay? So we could square both sides at this point. What do you get when you take negative 24 and square it? 576, good. Be careful if you're typing that in your calculator. That negative is also getting squared. So if you type in, if you just type this into your calculator, you're going to get negative 576 because your calculator is going to do the square before it does the negative. So if you're typing in your calculator, make sure you put parentheses around it so it'll give you the positive. Okay? So be careful with that. On the right hand side, what happens when you square the negative six? What do you get? If you do the negative six and square it, you get five of 30, 36. When you square the square root, you get x plus 20. Good. So we're just squaring each piece, right? And this goes back to my last question earlier. That's a grouping thing, right? That's why I've got the parentheses around it. Really is grouped together. So far, so good. What do we do next? Distribute. Distribute. Good. You get thirty-six x, and then thirty-six times twenty is not seven twenty-six. It's seven twenty. Subtract 720 from both sides. Oops. 44. Can't subtract. So you get negative 144 equals 36x. Divide by 36, we get x equals what? 4. Oh, that's negative four. Yep, thanks. And then the last thing we need to do is yep, plug it in and check, right? Always, always check your solutions. So square root of negative four plus five, is that the same thing as square root of negative four plus 20 and then minus a three? Is root 1 on the left hand side? Is that the same thing as square root of 16 minus 3? It is, yeah. So we get 1 is equal to 1. So let's check. That's okay. So let me give you some problems to work on front and back of this worksheet. Holler at me if you've got questions. I'll get solutions posted up here as well.